All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explain. Dr. Kush here. Before we move on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos and updates. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the difference between agonists and antagonists, two terms that are going to help us make sense of how drugs and neurotransmitters affect the brain. Now, before I go over these processes, we've got to understand two things. One is what are these structures and parts behind us? And two, how do neurons communicate? This is going to lay the foundation for understanding the difference, all right? All right, so what are we looking at here? What we're actually looking at is just two neurons communicating, right? It's that simple. As we talk about in other videos, we have two neurons here. Remember, two neurons don't actually touch each other. There's a tiny space between those two neurons. Do we know what that space is called? That space is called the synapse, all right? The synapse or synaptic gap. So we got a synapse here, there's our tiny gap, and here's our synapse here, there's our tiny gap, all right? And all those chemical messages are gonna flow between there, okay? Now what's up here and what's down there? Now what we have are both neurons. Here's our first neuron, right? We're gonna call this the presynaptic neuron, why? Because it comes before, this is gonna send its message over the synaptic gap to number two, the receiver, this is gonna be called the postsynaptic neuron, okay? So we have a presynaptic neuron releasing its message over the synaptic gap, be collected by the little receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Now, how does a neuron fire and communicate? Well, it starts with an electrical charge called an action potential. Now, we go very deep into this process in another video. I'll put the link up there. But we're going to have this charge travel down the neuron, right? We've got all the sodium entering, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to hit the end of the neuron, right, right here, called the axon terminal. And it stores all those chemical messages. In this case, we have letter E. Do we know what that stands for? Endorphins, all right? Endorphins, for this example, are our pain relievers, right? It's like a natural built-in ibuprofen in your mind. It's released when you are in pain, when you laugh, when you exercise, these are endorphins. And what's gonna happen is once that action potential hits the end of a neuron, these little vesicles are gonna fuse to the membrane, okay? And what happens then? All these chemicals are gonna be released into the synaptic gap, okay? We're just going over the process, right, of a neuron communicating, right? Now, where do they go? Well, they have to attach themselves and bind themselves to these receptors. But here's the problem. These receptors have a very specific code or password, right? And only specific chemical messages know that code. In this case, we have opioid receptors. And I kind of made this up. The code is 312. Why? I'm from Chicago. And I thought, well, that's the area code of Chicago. Let's do 312. You know who also has the code 312? Endorphins. Endorphins know that code, okay? And because they know that code, they can bind to those receptors and activate them, okay? It's like a lock and a key. And once they know that code, the receptor is going to open, okay? Sodium's going to rush in, and we're going to activate the neuron, okay? This is a normal chemical process. So what does this have to do with an agonist? Well, an agonist is any chemical that what? That mimics, okay, what does mimic mean? Copies a neurotransmitter by binding to receptors and activating them. In other words, there are drugs in this world that know the same password, have the same key, right, to activate the receptors as natural chemicals in the brain. Do you know what one of those is? Heroin, okay, a very strong narcotic. This drug has the same key, right? Has the same combination as opioid receptors. So who else has that password? If we think about that analogy, it is heroin. All right, so what heroin's going to do, this strong narcotic, is that it's so strong, it has such a strong affinity, is that it's gonna kick off all these endorphins. Okay, we can even put them back, okay? That's gonna enter our system, and because it has the same lock, right, it can activate them. It's gonna attach themselves to these specific opioid receptors. Now, why opioid receptors? Scientists have discovered that there are drugs in the outside world that activate the same receptors as something like endorphins, specifically chemical compounds from the opium poppy plant. Opium, hence opioid receptors. And heroin is one of those. And it is such a strong affinity, it can kick out endorphins, and instead heroin is gonna bind to those same receptors, it's gonna activate it, open up those receptors, and fire an action potential. So in this case, we can call heroin an opioid agonist, okay? An opioid agonist. All right, so there we go. An agonist is a drug that mimics or copies, right? Has the same combination to activate those receptors. 
All right, so that begs the question, what is an antagonist? Well, let's make this a real world scenario. Imagine somebody took too much heroin, right? We got heroin binding to the opioid receptors, right? Because it has the same key. Well, this person has had an overdose. They take too much, they overstimulated those opioid receptors, their breathing has stopped, they've lost consciousness, right? This is what we call an overdose. Now, if that is the case, you hope that you or a friend or somebody has something called Narcan or Naloxone. This is a nasal spray you would use to reverse that overdose. How does this work? We have to understand antagonists. Now, instead of an agonist, which copies or mimics a chemical message in the brain, an antagonist blocks. Okay, it doesn't mimic, it blocks a neurotransmitter by sitting on receptors without activating them. Remember I said before that heroin knows the same combination, so to speak, as our opioid receptors? Do you know what also has the same password or same key? Narcan. They also can activate opioid receptors, but instead of turning it on and opening these receptors, they're gonna turn them off. And Narcan is so powerful, it has such a strong affinity over endorphins and heroin that it's actually gonna knock off heroin off the opioid receptor and Narcan can take its place. This is a nasal spray that is going to reverse the effects of our overdose. And once again, a such strong affinity, the heroin is unable to activate, and instead, we are gonna deactivate, we are gonna shut off our receptor sites. So, instead of an opioid agonist, like heroin, Narcan or Naloxone would be called an opioid antagonist, okay? Because it blocks that receptor. So, in our real life example, if you have this nasal spray, it's gonna reverse that overdose, this antagonist by one, kicking off heroin, because Narcan has a stronger affinity for opioid receptors. It's going to allow you to breathe again because your respiratory system has suppressed and hopefully bring you back to life. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, put a comment below. I'll see you next time.